Okay, well I've got a, a, a scarf joint jig that I'm going to build today. Uh, I've got a, a neck that I'm building at the moment uh, and it's going to require a scarf joint. So um, I thought I'd make a jig, uh, simplify the procedure and film it. And uh, you guys can check it out. Okay, now what I've already done is measured the angle on this Wolfgang guitar, which is what, that's the angle I want on the neck I'm building. So it's just a little tool like this and just lined it up on the just where the fretboard joins and I was able to work out that the uh, the neck angle is spot on about 10 degrees so I lock this off at 10 and then I transferred that angle onto a sheet of MDF and followed it through extended it with a ruler and then cut that on the bandsaw and then I sanded to the line on the uh, disc sander so what I ended up with is this big long wedge which is at 10 degrees okay so what I'm going to do now is just line that up on a sheet of MDF that I have and we're going to make one of the sides and then we'll use that side as a template and we'll take it over to the router table and we'll do the other side so I'm just transferring the line along here and then I'm just going to transfer just a straight line along here like so okay so I'll cut this out roughly on the bandsaw and we'll use this as a uh, as a template to route this straight edge and that'll give me one side complete Alright. Okay, so we've got our master now. Uh, we just need to make a duplicate of it, which I'll do on the router table. So I'll just trace around it. Down on the bandsaw and then I'll route it. Okay, so this is the base of the jig. So what we're going to do is just scribe a center line all the way around, both sides and both edges. We can test the accuracy of the rails with a laser level. We just zero it out on a level surface and then put it on one of the rails. 10.15.
which is pretty close, close enough for me anyway. And the next part of the jig is just a, a top, which is about a 64th wider than the sides of the uh, sled. And then we've got a couple of sides that are just going to screw on there. Okay, well this is the unit complete. As you can see it's uh, pretty simple. You've just got a centre line down the middle here to register your neck blank. So you've got a centre line marked on the blank itself and on here you just align them. You slide that in, you put some double sided tape on it. You run some double sided tape up here. That just sits on top and the whole thing slides forwards and backwards and of course it's going to uh, sand the right angle on here and it should be ready to glue up after that Just about sanded in. That was with 80 grit. So I'm just going to go down to 220 now and finish finish up. Okay, well that's done, and that's looking really good, really good, nice and square here. I mean, that's perfect, spot on. Okay, the headstock portion is also sanded to 10 degrees now, so I'll be able to glue that up. But you'll notice that there's been uh, an addition to the jig here. And the reason I did that was I was finding on a smaller length, such as the headstock, the tape isn't enough to hold it in place properly. It was still moving forwards and backwards. 
so I needed something that was adjustable uh, that I could just butt up against the headstock and stop it moving so I, uh, I came up with this with the neck plank portion uh, you don't obviously need this jig in here that this portion could be removed when this is slid through and it's ready to be sanded you're securing the jig to your workbench anyway and this as it slides through you clamp it on anyway so it's held in place with a clamp so this whole thing can just be removed when uh, when it's not needed so I'll show you how I made this part <laughs> 